Hey guys and welcome back for another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a travel pet bowl. I saw this floating around the internet and decided to create a pattern for this. It folds up with a zipper and can easily hang off your leash or tucked in your purse. This one is waterproof which makes it great for a drinking bowl at the park and it can be thrown in the wash when soiled. As with all my tutorials, all the measurements will be over at the blog post as well as materials and links. If you're not already, I would love it if you subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so you can be alerted of new and future tutorials, and smash that like button as the kids like to say. I also have Instagram and Facebook linked below where you can join the community and show everyone what you're working on. Okay, let's get started. So for this tutorial, I will be using a canvas fabric for the outer and I'll be using a PUL for the inner and that is going to be a waterproof material. I have links where you can find that over at the blog post. I'm using a canvas fabric because it is more durable, but it also will help give my bowl more structure. And then I'm using a nylon zipper. So you wanna just make sure that your zipper will fit halfway around your circle on either side. In this video, I am battling the black bars. Right now, I took my video and actually stretched it, so my circle doesn't look perfect, but as you can see in this next clip, the black bars are there, so I am so sorry I did something wrong. <laughs> so I'm gonna take my rectangle, I'm gonna fold that in half with the right sides together and sew down the one side so we can make that into the sides of our bowl, like a loop. We're just gonna do a half inch seam allowance right there. Now, if you're a beginner sewer, this project might be a little fiddly for you, so I would definitely recommend having some clips and for sure pins. If you don't have clips, you can use binder clips or clothes pins, just some sort of clip. <laughs> So next we're going to fold the outer circle in half and I'm just gonna snip little triangles into the halfway points. And this is just gonna be markings for when I go to put the outer bowl on. So you'll see very soon. So here are the two markings. And now I'm going to grab my zipper and I'm going to open it. I'm gonna place the zipper with the zipper pull down onto the circle and I'm going to line that up with one of my notches. You're gonna have it a little bit above. The reason why is because we want it sticking out and we're basically gonna use that end of the zipper as a little tab to make it easier to open and close the little pouch. And then we're gonna take our pins and we're going to pin the zipper kind of close together as you can see. And now we're going to take that outer bowl part, the big rectangle loop. We're gonna line the seam up with that notch. I'm gonna take my pins and reposition them so I have the three layers. And I'm just going to pin it very, like not too much because I wanna be able to move my zipper. So I'm gonna take the one end of the zipper and I'm gonna pull it up so it lines up with the raw edge of the circle and the side of the bowl. And then we will start pinning or clipping. I'm just going to do a couple inches just to get me started. And then when I go to put it in the machine, I'm just going to do it as I go. So it's just this beginning part that can be a little fiddly when it's your first time. So just take your time, you know, use pins and whatever you need to use to make sure that you get this part perfect. So as you can see, we're going to go all the way down to the other notch with both sides of our zippers. And we're gonna stop a little bit before we get to that notch. So I'm just gonna go ahead and change into my zipper foot. If you don't know anything about zipper feet or foots, <laughs> I'm gonna leave a link in the information icon and you can check that video out. So now I'm just placing it into the machine and I'm gonna get as close as I can to that zipper pull. And very carefully, try not to hit your pin. I just put my needle into the fabric and then I quickly took that needle out because I do not wanna smash a needle in my face. <laughs> and then I'm gonna slowly work around the circle, placing the side of the bowl down and just trying to line it up as best as I can. So I just stop it every inch and a half to reposition. And then once I get down to that little notch, I'm gonna stop about a quarter of an inch away. And then we'll take it out of the machine 
and then we'll go back to the top on the other side of the zipper and do the exact same thing. Lining up our edges and then just curving it around the circle. And then again, we will pull it out about a quarter of an inch away. So this is how it's looking. If you have any pins, make sure you take them out at this point. So at this step, I definitely recommend you just pushing your zipper pull through the hole and just giving it a little test run because I've done this. I've put my zipper in completely backwards and you wanna make sure that your zipper is gonna close the right way to encase the bowl. <laughs> So if, as long as you kept your zipper pull towards the circle, you should be good. And right now it is, it's not closing properly and that's because it's not finished at all. So you might have a hard time, you know, testing it out, but don't worry. Once you get it all sewn properly, then it'll be, it'll be really good. I'm actually very surprised at how well it closes up on itself. Okay. So now I'm going to take the little piece of fabric and I'm just going to create a little strap and that's gonna be for, you know, just like a little hook if you wanna put a key ring on it or a split ring so that you can, you know, hang it off the dog leash or whatever you wanna do. So I folded it in that way, as you saw, and I'm just going to sew down both sides to make a little strap. Now I'm gonna go back and finish off that other hole that we left um, near the ends of our zipper. So we're just gonna, if you made it a little wide, then you're just going to place your zipper going towards that notch. And then we're gonna take that little strip of fabric or a little strap, and we're gonna stick that in between the zipper, lining it up with that notch. So here it also can be a little bit fiddly, so you're gonna wanna use your pins to make sure everything is placed correctly. And then I'm gonna get that little strap. I'll fold it in half. Oh, these, little, these, these zipper tails <laughs> are giving me a hard time. I'll take that little strap, I will tuck that in between the zipper, making sure the loop part is on the inside and the raw edges are sticking out. And then I'm just gonna take that to the machine and sew right over top of that. So at this point, it can be a little bit bulky. So if you wanna swap out for a more sturdy needle, you can do that. I didn't have too much of a hard time, but if you're going through you know, six layers of canvas and then the, the zipper teeth and everything, you might wanna do that. So you're basically just going to finish it off completely. So there's no holes in this little section. Okay, so after that, you can just snip off those excess tails. And I'm just gonna show you what it looks like now. So there was a little bit of puckering with the side of the bowl, but you won't notice it. It'll be on the inside. Okay, so now we are going to do a top stitch all the way around the circle. So I'm just going to just carefully go around the zipper by pulling it so that we can make sure that that fabric is pulled nice and tight away from the zipper teeth. When we get to the zipper portion, we're just gonna fold in those raw edges and we're gonna finish off that little hole also. So by doing a top stitch all the way around, when you do go to zip up your pouch later on, none of the fabric will get caught in the zipper teeth. So if you wanna clip the, the fabric flat, you can do that. If you wanna iron it, you can also do that. Um, but I'm just going to you know, just adjust it as I go, pulling on the fabric, making sure it's nice and tight away from the zipper. And then I also like to do a three stitch length when I do my top stitching. And make sure you pull out those pins. <laughs> so I am, of course, adding a lot of footage in this video, but 
Um, I wouldn't call this a beginner project. So if you are a little intimidated, if you are new to my tutorials, then I would definitely go back and do some simple zipper pouches before attempting something like this. But just know that if you do attempt it, you probably won't create the best product the first time. Um, this is my fourth attempt. So I have refined the process a lot um, while doing it. Okay, so this is how it's looking so far. So now we can work on our lining. So I am using a PUL material. That's something that you would find in cloth diapers or in bibs and things. You could use pretty much anything, you know, even vinyl or tablecloth or anything that will hold water and that you can sew with. So I'm gonna actually find the quarter points of that outer bowl. If I was smart, I would have done this a long time ago because it was a little bit more tricky. But now again, we're gonna find the quarter points on the um, lining of the bowl also. And we're just gonna use those markings so that we can make sure everything is nice and even and symmetrical. So now we're going to actually sew this whole thing inside out. Now, if you've ever seen this product, you will notice that they use bias tape all over it. And I am not a fan of bias tape. So I am making this with all of the raw edges hidden and no bias tape. I just can't, I just don't wanna. <laughs> so now I'm gonna line up all my quarter points. And as you can see, I'm putting the right side of my PUL, which I want the shiny side, up against the right side of the bowl. So I'm kind of putting it on the underside. And then when I flip it right side out, then it'll all work out, you'll see later on. But as you can see, all my quarter points are now all lined up and I have excess, of course, because the circle is a lot bigger. So we're actually gonna just place some pleats. I'm gonna do two pleats between each quarter point. If you wanna do three little pleats, you can do that. Whatever you wanna do, just try to make it as even as possible. And I mean, it should work out. Um, just visually, if you want it to be super even, then I would do that. But at the end, it doesn't really matter if it's perfect, um, just as long as it's pleated and it all fits all the way around. So if you're wondering why we're doing it this way, it's just to have maximum waterproofness, I guess. Um, if you did create the inside lining exactly the same way you did the outer bowl, um, then you know you could have some seepage through the stitches. So I just find that this would be the best option. And then after that, we're going to sew all the way around the edges of the bowl, and we're gonna leave about a two inch gap somewhere, wherever, um, just so that we can flip it right sides out. So this is how it is looking. And we'll just do a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way around. Just be careful when you take out your clips that you don't accidentally undo your little pleats. You know, just do it at the very last minute so that your pleat stays perfectly in place. And then after we're going to take it out and then we'll flip it right sides out using that hole. I'm loving this bowl so much. I've been going to the park with my dog lately, especially since now that it's really hot. And you know, when I go to give her water, I don't really have anything to put it in. So I just end up pouring it into my hand, which you can imagine is pretty gross. <laughs> So now I have this and it's small and compact and I can just, you know, hook it on her leash so I don't even have to think about it. So I'm really excited about this. <laughs> so now that I have it right sides out, I'm just going to take the lining and I'll push it inside the bowl. So as you can see, the shiny is on the inside and that's gonna make it a lot easier to clean also. But like I said, you can just throw this thing right into the washing machine. So that's awesome. Now we're just going to do a top stitch around the edge of the bowl. So I'm just going to flatten my edges and when you go over to the little hole, you're just gonna make sure you tuck in those raw edges and then you can just top stitch right over top of that and then you're golden. You have an adorable little bowl that has absolutely no raw edges. I, I love it, I should make a t-shirt. Oh, I really do not like raw edges. <laughs> I didn't know this about me until now. <laughs> oh gosh. So yeah, I'm just clipping it as I go. 
Can you tell that in the beginning of the tutorial I'm all professional and then I just start to just fall apart at the end? I just get real. <laughs> Kids should be home soon. Today is the last day of school in Canada. Oh my goodness. So for the PUL, it is a little bit hard to get through the machine, so you might need to coax it along. As you can see, I'm kind of pulling it in the back. Um, but I mean, it's not horrible, so. And I also would use a little bit longer stitch length for waterproof material, just because um, depending on the one that you're using, if you're using a vinyl or something like that, um, having really close stitches might just cause it to tear. And then here it is. I absolutely love how this tutorial turned out. The bowl is super cute. Nala totally loves it. She totally used it, which I'm amazed. And of course, if you tried this tutorial, I would love it if you shared over on Instagram and Facebook. And of course, subscribe if you're not already. So thank you so much for watching me and supporting my channel. If you don't already know, I post tutorials every Friday and a little something extra every Tuesday. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next tutorial. Bye guys.